And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hi, I'm Tom Vassell, and I'm reviewing the fifth expansion for the game Ahambra. Now, my Ahambra is from the Big Box expansion, or the Big Box game, which comes with the original game and all five expansions. It's a good deal if you want to get it. However, you may already own the original game Alhambra and just want to look at the fifth expansion, so that's what we're going to talk about today. There are four modules in expansion number five, and I'm going to talk about each of those four modules. I've looked at the four modules for each of the five expansions, so I'll be comparing the modules to the other ones, and you'll, so you'll see a ranking out of 20, and which, you know, should you get this module and how well does it mix with the other ones. Each of the modules in this book, uh, they do talk about how they correspond with one another. Sometimes there's a bit of an overlap. So it's nice that there is that available, but they usually pretty self-explanatory. Sometimes you might say, well, how does this work together? Expansion number five, should they have stopped while they were ahead? These are, I almost want to call this the convoluted expansion. Let's take a look at the modules. The first module in this expansion is the simplest by far, and that is the new scorecards. A whole pile of new scorecards are provided, and you're going to pick three of those randomly, and then you're going to put them next to this, where they'll sit next to the board, and then instead of going by the normal colors of scoring, which if you've forgotten, you can see here on the chart, you'll see that blue is always the lowest points, and purple is always the highest. Well, let's look at this. With these, you'll see in the first turn, blue is still the lowest, but white is now the highest. In the second turn, purple's the lowest and green is highest. And in the third scoring phase, green is the lowest and white is the highest. This adds some variety. Now, some people aren't going to like this because the number of tiles of each color in the game is predetermined to some degree. And, for example, there's fewer uh, blue and red tiles than there are purple and white tiles. But I like this. It also makes you look ahead. You might say, well... I don't have many white, I have a lot of white tiles and they're not worth a lot in the middle of the game, but at the end of the game, they're worth it. I'm not sure how they randomize these tiles, except there is three of every color in every position. So three of the tiles have purple in the lowest spot, three of the tiles have red in the lowest spot, three of the tiles have green in the highest spot, and so on and so forth. A good expansion, one I use quite often. We go from simple to convoluted with module number two, the power of the Sultan. Of course, we need a die. You gotta add a die into the game somehow. And this game comes with several Sultan cards. When a Sultan card is turned up, one player rolls the die, and then a black cube is placed on the card on the building of that color. Now, players can now buy this card, and you see the price of it, it costs seven yellow. They all cost seven of one color. The card will show you. See this one here costs seven blue. So let's say I buy this card for seven yellow. At that point, I can keep it as is, or I can re-roll the die, and then put, for example, here I rolled gray. I can put the cube on the gray, or the opposite side of the die, I can put it on the brown. So let's decide, or not white, I'm sorry, I say gray, white. Let's say I decide to put it on the brown. I then can put this card in front of me. Later on in the game, let's say a brown tile shows up that people can buy, I can instantly discard my card and take that brown tile in front of me. Okay, so that's a neat way to get new tiles into the game uh, and get a free tile, and it's a, a bit of forward planning, but I don't know, it just feels kind of and just odd, and rolling the die, uh, I don't know, it just it's not one that I want to use very often because it, the, the amount of work put into it doesn't seem to be worth the payoff that you get from it. Module 3, the Caravan Serai, is an interesting one. It's convoluted again, but this is one that I think is a pretty neat concept. As the game progresses, you have the chance to buy these cards. Now, the cost of them depends on how many different color buildings you have in your Alhambra. So if you have four they cost eight. If you have five, they cost four. If you have six different color buildings, they cost only two. Once you buy the card, and you take it and put it in front of you, then you put a cube at the bottom. On each of your turns, that cube can be moved on the track. So for example, I can move it up here, and then the next turn I can move it here, and then the next turn I have a choice of either moving it here or moving it over one. 
If I move it over, this card is a, a two blue currency. If I moved it up, it would be a three green currency. So you can see there's all different color currencies it can be. And when I buy things, I can spend that currency. So let's say it's here. I could spend five yellow to buy something. I put it back to start. And so it's like this constantly recharging currency. Now it's not as great as you might think because the currency, uh, while it's reusable, does take a while to move up. And there's not that many turns in Alhambra. Not to mention you need four different color buildings to even be able to buy one, which you might as well because the eight that you spend on it at that point in time will certainly be worth it in the long run that you'll get back. And, but the game will still be at a certain point by the time you have that many different colors in your Alhambra. So despite all that, I like it. I like the, the multiple moving tracks. You can't move backwards, you know, for example, so if I moved here to two blue, well then I better spend that two blue. I have no other choice. And each card has a different color on the main track uh, with co the other colors off shooting. It's a neat idea. It's not one I would use all the time, but it is something to add a nice change of pace to the game. The final module is the Art of the Moors. Each player gets one of these docks and puts it in front of them. And as the game, and they'll have all these different piles of different artwork, each with a number on it, during the course of the game. Now, as the game progresses, if you get two tiles that are the same number, for example, if I get both of these seven tiles and build them somewhere in my Alhambra, then I can take the matching seven hexagon here, put it over here, and dock it in my docking bay at zero. So let's look here. See it's docked in the docking bay at zero. I then put the cube on the number two because that's how many sevens I have. If I get more seven tiles as the game progresses, I'll move this cube higher. So let's say I get four of them, my, the cube would go all the way up to the nine. Then at the beginning of my turn, instead of doing another action, I can take all of these culture tiles, they're called, and rotate them one. And every time I rotate, I can rotate as far as the black cube. At the end of the game, I'm going to get points for the numbers that are in the docks. And so you can get multiple tiles in the docks, and if you need another dock, you can. Oddly enough, though, you're not going to see as many points scored from this as you might think, because you have to get multiples of the same number. You get multiple tens, let's say, for example. Or, or let's look at this tile here. You'll see that multiple elevens, that two of them can get you six points. Three of them gives you up to 13 points, and four gives you 18 points. Well, that just gives everyone else an incentive to buy the elevens. So what this is, in essence, is it's a very convoluted, and I know I keep using that word, way to score the tiles by numbers in addition to scoring them by colors. Uh, I don't really know what to think about that. The, the set does come with these cards, these reference cards, which show you how many there is of each color and in, in what numbers. On the flip side is the same thing, but it shows it by walls. You can use that one for the art for some of the other expansions. In fact, these cards are nice enough that we use them in all the games just so that everybody knows what tiles are available in the game. So this is an interesting expansion, but I just a module, but it just doesn't seem to work out well enough for me to complicate it. You can see that I'm not a huge fan of Expansion 5. I mean, there's some neat things in it that I can use and incorporate in my games. Uh, I actually if I had to choose between it and Expansion 1, I might pick Expansion 5, but it seems like they're running out of ideas and now the only way to increase the game is to, you know, add these really complicated maneuvers which don't even really make a whole lot of sense thematically. Um, so, I don't know. If you're buying expansions, you may want to pass this one by unless some of the ideas I just mentioned are worth it. Uh, if you're buying the big box, some of these modules are certainly worth mixing in your game, especially the, the different scoring ones, but not all the time. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.